Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Alexis Colliado, your product designer from the Philippines. In this video, we are going to learn how to make personas. Personas are a fictional representation of people. It was first popularized by the author Alan Cooper in his book, The Inmates Are Running the Asylum. Personas are fictional, but they're based on reality. So before you even start making your personas, make sure you've done your market studies, your qualitative studies, diary studies, contextual inquiry, and even reviewing secondary information or research, you know, on the internet or academic journals, or, you know, even news about your target users. People love talking about personas, but no one actually shows you how to make them. So I'm going to show you. Step one, you want to start with categories. Categories are, you know, taglines that describe the user's role in your system. A category can be, you know, a shopper, uh, a, a buyer, an, an investor, a student, a teacher, a recruiter, uh, and all sorts of things you can think of. It's usually related to their job title. I work for a recruitment platform, so I use categories like the enterprise recruiter, the recruitment manager, and things like that. What matters is to use categories that matter to your organization, to your company, or to your product. Step two is to fill in demographic details. Here are the most common ones. So you fill in the name, the age, gender. Uh, you probably want to add a photo just to make um, your persona look real. The photo is very important. You can add a job, occupation, or the role of the persona. You can add quotes, things the persona would actually say. You can add a short bio that describes the persona's life in two to three paragraphs, you know, basically a day in life. You can put in personal facts to make them memorable. Just make sure that the facts that you put in are actually useful to your product or your company. If you put there the persona loves a specific type of wine and your product is, you know, a wine marketplace, and then that's fine. Here's the more important part of the persona, it's your goals. Goals usually manifest through I want or I need statements. The difference doesn't really matter, but if you're interested, needs usually revolve around things like the business, money, family, or other critical activities. On the other hand, wants are needs that refer to leisurely or non-critical activities. Before you finalize your goals, make sure that the goal you put in can actually be solved or accomplished by your product. If not, you're just making it harder for your team to find your persona useful. There are three kinds of goals that you might want to consider to add to your persona that are really useful. First of them are life goals. Life goals are usually long-term by nature and not all life goals are useful for your product team. As an example, you can put there I want to retire by age 45. Not exactly useful for all kinds of products, but if you're a fintech platform, it is. Another type of goal which are useful for personas are end goals. End goals are goals that your personas can accomplish through your product. For example, you can have a goal that says there, I want to easily organize photos. If you're on the Google Photos team, that might be a nice goal. But if you can dig deeper, um, you can ask why. Why do you want to easily organize photos? If you can dig deeper with that goal, make sure you do so it's going to be more useful to your product team. Lastly, we have experience goals. How do your personas want to feel while they're using your product? Do they want to have fun and not feel stupid? Do they want to feel important? Do they want to feel a different emotion. Those are experience goals, you can add them to your persona. It also forces you to be inclusive because you know you can think about people who have high anxiety when they're using your product and you know you can design for that. Here's a really good quote about goals from Kim Goodwin, a design and product leadership consultant and executive. Our understanding of goals is what helps us create future scenarios for successful products since we have to understand our users' goals before we can design products that help accomplish them. Aside from goals, you can add things like frustrations or pain points and that's really self-explanatory. The template I just gave you isn't the end-all be-all of all persona templates. Personas can be flexible. At the end of the day, add info that adds value to the team. Your number one goal is to add details that will help you and your team focus during the design phase. 
this will ultimately allow you to build a better product. And if you're really interested in why you should do personas, you should watch the previous video on why you should start taking your personas seriously. I know what you're thinking and I know what you're feeling. You're probably thinking that you don't have time to do the user research before doing the personas. Well, Alexis, I don't have time to do user interviews. I have the solution for you. Basically, start with assumption personas. Start with your assumptions first. Run a workshop with your core team consisting of three to five people because it's impossible to create personas alone. Is that based on personal experience? Trust that your team has already built the expertise. Whatever their assumptions are, these are reflective of their contributions to the organization as a whole. The problem is, it remains in their heads. It remains unarticulated. As designer, you want to bring those assumptions out. Even if it's not data-driven yet, assumption personas can still nudge you to create strong design decisions. So how do you do it? I suggest doing an affinity diagramming exercise. Affinity diagramming is just a fancy way of categorizing things together that makes sense. You can definitely do this remotely. I recommend using an online tool called Miro. As a designer, you need to facilitate do timed exercises where you write down user goals, pain points, and motivations. And then after that, you can fill in the categories and the demographic data any way you want. Doing assumption personas helps in three ways. It builds buy-in, and now people understand the value of creating personas. It also aligns everyone's assumptions together, basically a very enlightening moment for the participants. And finally, it just makes it so much easier and faster to just validate the assumption personas later when you do decide to do your qualitative studies and user research. However, I will end with this quote, building personas through assumptions is good, but building personas through data is much, much better. If you like this video, just smash the like button, hit subscribe, and click the bell icon below, and I'll see you on the next video.